With a series that's as long running as Need for Speed, it's no surprise that it's taken on many different forms. It's gone from racing rare cars on rural highways to customizing tuners on crowded city streets. It's been entirely cartoony in games like Nitro and taken a stab at track day realism and shift. Now Ghost, the studio currently handling the franchise, has determined to define the essence of the series, plotting a course for games to come with this year's reboot, simply titled Need for Speed. Every element of the game centers around five different themes, speed, style, build, crew, and outlaw. While racing, accomplishing feats in any of these categories increases your reputation, which essentially acts as XP, and leveling up gives you access to new parts in the garage. If you go fast, you'll earn points for speed. Drifting earns points for style. A clean nitrous burn nets you build points, and running from the cops or driving dangerously racks up your reputation as an outlaw. Performing feats from multiple categories forms combos, and if you manage to pull off all five at once, you'll create a perfect moment. Making that happen doesn't come easily, and it can be exhilarating when you finally do. All these points also get tracked over time to make up a profile of the kind of driver you are, although it feels as if outlaw points come too easily, even if you don't feel like you're being particularly rebellious. Please. Save. Me. I'm going stir crazy, or maybe I have gone crazy, or we're just about to. I'm sorry. Rambling. I need to get out. Meet up? Not taking no for an answer. You better show. These five themes also define the game's structure, dividing it into five parallel careers. The characters from the live-action video serve as your mission givers, calling you up when they have new races available. And once you've cleared all five paths, you can look forward to an epic finale. Some types of races are common in every career path, but the focus on each branch is evident. Speed events put more emphasis on time trials, while style has you sliding around corners in drift events. Meanwhile, crew races can be interesting as they require you to stay in close proximity to others in the group, which can also make things a bit messy if they go wrong. The build category is the most welcome aspect of this Need for Speed, offering an incredibly robust set of tools to customize your ride. There are only about 50 cars available, but unlike many games, the goal isn't to bounce from car to car, but to invest in each and make it your own. In fact, during our 20-hour playthrough, we spent most of the time with only four cars. As mentioned earlier, more powerful parts unlock as you progress, and many of these aren't just about power and top speed, but give you a greater range of flexibility to change how your car handles. If you find this too intimidating, you can simply choose whether to gear it more towards grip or drift styles, but players who want to make more detailed adjustments have a number of areas to tweak, and you can't simply copy the settings from one car and expect the same results on another. You have to work to tame each machine's base characteristics, but keep in mind that this is still an arcade racer through and through. The tools for visual customization aren't quite at the same level as Forza, but they're getting there, providing the most versatility the series has seen for quite some time. You'll be able to invest a lot of in-game cash to buy and upgrade vehicles, but thankfully, there are no microtransactions in this year's Need for Speed, even though they've been common in past games. The Outlaw Path is perhaps the aspect we're the most split on. Cops are far less aggressive than in 2013's Rivals, and while it's a relief to be able to do what you want without being hounded, there's also a sense that you have to bait the police out of their slumber. If you merely pass by a cop, they'll soon be left behind. So before you can get into a heated chase, you have to pester them until they finally start calling in backup and roadblocks. Outlaw race events often aren't that different from any others, as you can lose the police so quickly that they really don't matter. Manual. Punctuating milestones in each career path are the live-action cinematics, and believe it or not, they're not as bad as you'd expect. You may even find yourself warming up to some of the characters. We'd give Manu a big bear hug anytime. There are some funny gimmicks once in a while, like raising a glass to the camera, but there's no dire undercover mission or further drama. It's just a group of drivers who want to impress icons they look up to in the automotive world, such as Magnus Walker and Ken Block. Most of the scenes are just about hanging out, talking about the next set of races, and the transitions from live action to the in-game cars are impressive at times. This guy, man. All of this happens in Ventura Bay, which is loosely based on Los Angeles, with urban high-rises, residential and industrial areas, and hills full of drift-worthy switchbacks. For better or worse, it's always night, and it's always barely raining, dampening a sense of variety. You're also always online, as all drive returns, populating the map with eight players doing their own thing. 
If you want, you can meet others, crew up, and race together for extra bonuses. Since no one's a cop, you can peacefully coexist. Of course, there's still potential to harass other players, but there's no good reason to do so. Scattered spots around the map provide discovery points where you can gaze at vistas or do donuts, but they aren't very enticing. Rounding out the feature's autolog recommendations return, prompting you to sample the addiction of besting other players' times, and the game also features daily challenges and rewards to keep you coming back. While Need for Speed might not be at the top of its class in terms of visuals, it still looks great overall. Unfortunately, at high speeds, you can come across noticeable performance drops and pop-in, although depending on your tolerance, you may simply be going too fast to care. The music playlist fits the urban mood, and the song selection stands up well to repetition without driving you mad. <laughs> 2015's Need for Speed is in many ways more grounded than in other recent entries. You don't throw spike strips at each other, and you don't jump off buildings. It's more about the inherent excitement of dodging traffic and drifting down the side of a mountain. The customization features are a welcome return, and the five-layered career lets you play with different approaches to driving. Some aspects of Need for Speed could use more variety, but it's a solid foundation to move the series forward. Have fun, and maybe I'll see you out there, yeah? Oh, and um, put the tools back.